Welcome to Busy Central launch event related to 2024 release wave two. My name is Alexander Totovic, and today with me I have my colleague Magnus. Hi, my name is uh, Magnus, and uh, I'm a software engineer in Business Central. Okay, thank you, Magnus. Uh, we will today in, uh, explain what is new in electronic documents. Shortly, we will just explain a few things from a previous release and what is new in this release. And then we will switch to demo where Magnus will show you uh, setup of different services and new features we deliver in this wave. Okay, before we start, I just wanted to remind you uh, how we started with documents. First idea was to start with invoicing, but we decided to switch to e-documents as it can be central hub for exchanging any type of electronic documents. When I say any, probably not really any, but the most of electronic documents can be exchanged through e-documents module. Uh, our main focus is to manage all incoming and outcoming documents, but current focus for Microsoft side is still electronic invoicing exchange. So feature is open for exchanging any of, um, as a feature, framework is uh, open for exchanging any type of documents, but Microsoft is currently focused on electronic invoicing. Uh, all uh, upcoming and features in this release are actually driven by regulatory requirements and feedback uh, we are getting from uh, community for partners and customers. But what is important to remember, uh, Again, this framework is designed to be easy extendable and allowing all ISVs or other partners to integrate various type of electronic documents. So we are uh, again open not only for regulatory features, we are open to uh, extend this functionality to make it easier for you to build on top of that. Why electronic voices primarily? If you look in this table, you will see first that B2G uh, electronic voice is definitely mandatory in majority of countries across the world. Actually, this is a list of localizations where Microsoft uh, deliver localizations, not partner-based localizations, so probably uh, this list will be much, much bigger. But if you look in our localization, maybe uh, support localization processes, B2G is already mandatory. But it was not trigger uh, for us to start with electronic documents, electronic voices. B2B mandat being mandatory is, was a trigger for us. So if you look right now, this is mandatory in uh, Denmark, in Belgium, in Italy, uh, India, Mexico. In this moment, we already have uh, Italian and Mexico electronic voice in, in old formats. So uh, for our future um, backlog, this is something what we will move to new framework. And um, outside of these countries, you will see that Australia and New Zealand have recommended uh, usage of B2B. So this is not mandatory, but this is highly recommended to use. Uh, but this yellow column with B2B voluntary, you can see again that this is available for, for voluntary usage in all these countries. So if not mandatory, this is voluntary. So you can use, you can automate some of your processes, especially account payable. There are a lot of automation there. And you have, uh, when we talk about plans, you will, uh, will see these orange plans in the uh, uh, right columns that um, France, Germany and Spain will come sooner, but other countries will come again in a few years. So we decided to first to be focused on electronic invoicing, so we will be compliant in all these regulations. Okay, now let's focus what we have in this wave. First, uh, we have some improvements in electronic documents framework. So you can see we have new default endpoints. They will not be available immediately from this major release. So first will come with 25.1 and uh, others will be delivered in this period. Now, I cannot see exactly because um, uh, we need to finish reviewing to, to check all these details. We need to be really sure that everything will work as expected. But what I want to um, emphasize here, uh, majority of these connectors are uh, made in collaboration with these partners. So we use open source collaboration model and we work together with the partners. So these partners made the, the majority of these things by themselves. And uh, from our side, we instructed how to do it. And now we are making a review of code. So uh, code quality must be the same as Microsoft is delivering. So this is why it cannot be delivered immediately, but you can expect that very soon you will have all these connectors. So Avalara, B2B router, Continua, Logic, SignUp, Tieto Every, and True Commerce. This is important. So now, except Pagero, as we already have, in total, until the end of this wave, we will have eight 
default connector, so you can choose what you want to use. Again, uh, you will not have uh, any commercial model inside the BC, so you must sign contract with these providers. Uh, but once when you have contract, you can just choose one of these options and make a setup, easy setup, you will see how it's easy, and you can continue to work without any additional development and configuration. Then additionally, we added one of the highly uh, required feature, having attachments as encoded object uh, in, in, within XML files. It was important, it is important, because XML files with the PayPal and other fi uh, file formats are good for ma as a machine readable format, so they can be easily translated from uh, XML to uh, purchase uh, documents, that's good, but this is not easy for human read as a human readable format. So having encoded uh, attachments inside, this is something that can improve a human uh, readable usage, so it will be much easier for users uh, to handle with electronic documents. Then we improved some small things in the search. It was not easy because uh, you had to use hash or not. Now this is much easier to find the doc uh, all these uh, pages in a search. We also added uh, some small things you cannot uh, recognize on the first side, but we wanted to stabilize this framework. It was our focus on stabilizing, so we work a lot of small features in, inside the framework. And you will see eDocuments APIs. First idea was to deliver them in a major, but we decided to postpone because we got some better idea how we can improve this API, so we wanted to take some additional time. So the most probably 25.3, we will deliver eDocuments API so you can reuse them in a boat and purchase and sales process and it will be really good for you if you want to integrate. Then <coughs> we have another part, eDocuments localizations. As you know, we already have by default Pebble B3, in a W1, so this is available uh, in all localization, and we have uh, PayPal deliver as a code and as a data exchange definition. So you can use this as a showcase how to build your own formats if you need. So you can choose what is better for you. It depends from country to country, from partners to partner. They, some of them uh, much more prefer code, some of them data exchange, so we are open. We have a good showcase, so you can see how you can make your own format. But from Microsoft side, in period from December uh, this year until the April 25th, we will uh, deliver this format. Uh, to be uh, more accurate, uh, in December we will deliver Extractung and in Germany and Fatura A in Spain. So uh, this country will be a compliance uh, from the beginning of next year because it will be mandatory usage of electronic, doc electronic voicing in, in Spain and Germany. And PayPal ANZ format for Australia and New Zealand will come after New Year. So this is, by I said, until the April uh, 25. Okay, it was shortly what we have in this release, and now I will give a word to my colleague Magnus, so he will show you how it's looked like in a demo. Thanks, Alexander. Thanks for introducing uh, the new features. Let's uh, see how they look in uh, Business Central. So with me today, I have a, a GP environment in version 25.1. So uh, let's uh, search for e-documents. And here we can see that I have created a e-document service for today's demo. If we open that up, we can see that the service integration that I have selected is the new integration that we have added, Avalara. And we still have uh, Pegero as well uh, that you can use. And there will be more to come in the next coming months. So if we open up uh, setup service integration in order to set up Avalara, we can see that we don't actually have to add a lot of things. We have to provide the client ID and the client secret as well as uh, selecting Avalara uh, company ID to link your Avalara company ID to uh, your business central uh, company. So let's go ahead and do that. We just click the action and then we select one of our Avalara companies. I will select MS Business Central. And then we also have to select an Avalara mandate, which determines uh, when we send our invoices to Avalara, this mandate specifies what checks should be done to verify uh, if the right fields and so on are provided. Since we are in a GP environment and I want to demo a business-to-business -business scenario with Pebble, I'm going to find that in the list. So GB B2B Pebble, select that, and then that is what will be used when we send with this service. Just to uh, compare how it was with uh, Pegero, I'll switch to uh, another company where I have the Pagaro set up here. So you can see it's uh, still very, very similar. Um, 
the URLs are already filled out for you. You just provide like these small pieces of information. So in Pagero, for instance, it, it is the company ID you need to provide. But uh, with Avalara, we are, we are asking for client uh, ID and client secret. And that's essentially everything. The service is uh, using the Pebble format. And uh, then let's uh, go see how we send uh, an invoice using it. So I'll just go to customers. I will select the uh, tray research. And as you can see here, we have the document sending profile set for this customer to e-documents, allowing us to actually use the e-document framework when we post invoices. So let's create a new sales invoice. And from here, we will just have to fill out a couple of things. So the first thing I will fill out is the reference, as that is required by the Pebble format. And then I will sell a, let's say, a desk. And we will just sell one. And then as Alexander said before, we've also added in the Pebble format that we can send attachments. So I will also go ahead and actually attach a PDF here. So we will just use this invoice sample, like so. And that is everything we need to just go ahead and uh, post it. And then this will uh, take the invoice, create a XML format in Pebble, and then send that to Avalara. That will then send it on to the receiving end, and we'll see that in just a second. There we go. And then we just uh, open the posted invoice. And then we navigate to the e-document that has been created. And here we can see that the e-document is in a pending response state. And this is because the way it works with the Avalara is that we, we send the, the invoice to them. Then they will do some processing to, with the mandate to verify that the correct things are provided. And then we will have to actually send another request to Avalara asking if the, the processing of this invoice was uh, successful. So normally, or in production, this is happening in the background. Automatically, you don't have to do anything. But because we are in a demo today, I will just go ahead and, uh, and trigger this in uh, our job queues. Like so. And now we can see that the document is indeed sent. So this is all you need to do to uh, to send with Avalara. Let's let's look at it from the other side if we want to receive. So I'm going to change to a different company, uh, Trey Research, and uh, now we want to receive invoices from our vendors. So I'm going to go to eDocuments, and here we can see we have already received documents before. Um, and then we can open up eDocument services from here. And just as with the other company, we have set up a service that is using the Avalara integration. One thing I will add is that you should, uh, you should set auto import when you're using this in production, such that every X amount of time, we will run and check if there is uh, new incoming documents. Because we are again running a demo today, I will just do this manually. So I will click the receive action to see if there's anything new. And this will just run for a little bit. It says processing e-document, so it found one. And it will create the purchase invoice. So let's go back to the list. And from here, you can see we got a new entry. We can open that up. And we can see everything is as it should be. It's uh, created. It says import document created. And we can actually also open the purchase invoice that we generated for you. And you can see it here. And it also has the attachment. Um, that we attach when we send it. And that's essentially uh, for sending and receiving with Avalara. Thank you, Magnus. Um, as you can see, this is something uh, what we deliver in this wave, and you can expect some other connectors and other features uh, in next miners. In the meantime, call for action. Uh, if you didn't start to use that 20 documents earlier, we have on YouTube uh, uh, recordings from uh, previous waves, so you can familiarize yourself a little bit more in details of what we have in electronic documents. So, because today you could see only what is new, so please watch old videos to see what we had in the beginning, how it works the total, and then you can easily understand what is new in this release and how we are improving this feature. Okay, thank you for watching us. Thank you.